Being an entrepreneur is absolutely hard to describe. You're working through chaos, you're trying to organize it daily, and every day has unexpected challenges. We're PPO Lab, we're a little startup out of Berkeley. We're kind of like happy nerds. We want to make great quality products out of naturally occurring vitamins. Margaret started her company because she had a child with complex medical needs. And in dealing with that process and, and in and out of hospital, she learned the importance of immunity and how vitamins play a deeply important role in that. And she reached out to the FTC and said, hey, I'm going to bring this product to market. I want to know, is it complying with the law? They sent her back a long, lawyer-laden letter with all of their actions against various people. But it didn't tell her. It said, well, we're not going to give you any advice. Two years later, after that first letter, they end up filing a complaint in federal court. And it's very specific about what they think that she did wrong. Had they said that to her two years ago, we wouldn't be having this discussion right now. I'm a rule follower. I want to do things the right way. Where did I go wrong? As far as I'm aware, the FTC doesn't have a single doctor in its, in its personnel, and yet they purport to know everything about supplements and what you can and cannot say about them. This is a tiny little operation. They want to fine her hundreds of thousands of dollars for selling basically vitamins. They want to destroy this woman's life. No normal organization would do that. Only a rogue uh, administrative agency uncontrolled by any elected official would even attempt it. The federal government, they wanted to set me up to fail. And that's so frustrating. Federal Trade Commission versus Precision Patient Outcomes is a case wherein the FTC doesn't like what our clients have said about their dietary supplements, which are primarily vitamins, like vitamin D, vitamin C, vitamin E, that sort of thing. Deficiencies in those vitamins makes you more susceptible to COVID, so it was first called COVID resist. But when she got the letter from the FTC, she thought, well, this is all COVID related, I won't make it COVID related. So she called it virus resist. And they don't like that either. We know that there's been no consumer complaints about these products. We know that COVID resist was never sold. We know that the FTC was aware of both of those facts before they filed the complaint. When I got notified by the FTC, it was such a dark tunnel. I can only remember feeling darkness. The federal government, it's like they're making rules in real time and they're changing laws. And even experts in the field find it confusing. Based on the law, some of these products are regulated by the FDA, but something that Congress did back in the mid 90s was say very specifically, this is how we are going to regulate dietary supplements. That power was given to the FDA and very specifically banned things like the requirement of double blind studies, which is the view the FTC takes. So effectively, the FTC has taken the view as to dietary supplements and the claims companies make about them, that you need to do a double blind study, which is incredibly expensive, before you can bring a product to market. It doesn't allow new smaller entities to enter the market. And then on top of that, it's not in the law. The FTC in the 1920s was a different creature than it is now. So the Supreme Court was faced with uh, an attack on the FTC's uh, procedures for enforcing the Federal Trade Act. And they said, you know, we don't really mind the structure here because what the FTC is doing is, is, is quasi-judicial and quasi-executive. But what it does now, I mean, bringing a case in federal court is not quasi-anything. It's an executive action. And in order to do that, they have to, under the statute, pass it by the Justice Department. And the Justice Department passed on it. Well, when the Justice Department says we're passing on it, why does the FTC get to go forward when it has no more competency in the law than the Justice Department does? And the Justice Department has longstanding policies and procedures that are uh, understandable and that are controllable by the president. The FTC really doesn't. We are attacking the structure of the FTC. The Department of Justice, Department of Energy are set up under the constitutional structure that the president has to control the commissioners. So he has to be able to fire them. And that is not the case in the FTC context. Also, the commissioners have staggered terms, which means that one president can't control the whole, whole FTC. So what you have is an un 
guided missile of an agency constitutionally. This was my dream. I, this is my absolute living my best life. And it's soul crushing to have the federal government treating you like you're guilty before you've even been warned. And there's no opportunity to make it right. You're just gonna be put through a very torturous process that's gonna condemn you for the rest of your life to being perceived as a bad actor. And that's just not fair.